the network. So I'm gonna be real with y'all. I didn't originally plan to make this video, and I know I haven't dropped in a minute. I've been dealing with some stuff on the back end, brand and network, country brands. But trust and believe, I'm gonna come back with a vengeance once it's time, right? But I was reading through my general music business, music industry websites, and I came across this article that is interesting to say the least. And it's interesting because it is a modern case study of just how innovative the music industry is willing to be when it comes to finessing artists, right? And the article has to deal with Live Nation. If you don't know who Live Nation is, Live Nation is like the biggest promoter company in all of the music industry. They damn near control all of the venues and like every artist from like Post Malone to Billie Eilish to pretty much any artist that makes it to like a certain mainstream level have to go through Live Nation at some point. That's just how much of a, a monopoly they have on the touring industry. And I want you to remember that while we're talking about this. They damn near have a monopoly on the touring industry, right? So what the article is talking about is a memo leaked from their office that details their policy updates or their changes to their contracts for artists touring for festivals and shows moving forward into 2021. And it's a lot of red flags in here, bro. Like there is a whole new level of finessery that has been brought up thanks to this like this really makes you think that there are people who go to school to get degrees in finesse just to come out and like apply that shit to the real world as fast as possible that's how crazy this is so i'm not gonna get into the whole thing i'm not gonna read the whole thing i'll link to it in the description below if you want to go and check it out but what i want to do is go through some of the red flags that just like popped out to me so i'm going to take off my marketer hat right i'm going to put my promoter hat on and we can dive into some of this stuff. Now, before we get into this, come and follow me on Instagram. I'll put my ad name in the description below. Come talk to me, come engage with me, come give me some video ideas, all of that good stuff. Also, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this video. It helps it out. We need to get this out because people need to see that major label artists get finessed too, you know what I'm saying? Like, we always think of finessing as like the DJ cheating the artist out like $50. Nah, bro, finessing comes from all sides of the music industry and people need to be careful. So like I said, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I will at least read the first paragraph because I feel like this sets up where their mind was at while they was making these new rules, right? So it says, the global pandemic has changed the world in recent months and with it, the dynamics of the music industry. We are in unprecedented times and must adequately account for the shift in market demand, the exponential rise of certain costs and the overall increase of uncertainty that, uh, of uncertainty that materially affects our mission. In order for us to move forward, we must make certain changes to our agreements with the artists. The principal changes for 2021 are outlined below. Now, I will say this, out of all sides of the music industry that have really taken a hit because of COVID, touring has probably taken the biggest hit, right? Like no one's trying to go to a show. Like I'm not trying to go to a little Uzi Vert show and have some 16 year old coughing on me and I go home and learn I got the wrong, you know what I'm saying? I know if I'm thinking that, it's probably a hell of other people that feel the exact same way. So I will say this, touring has definitely taken a big hit because of all of this. And I can't even begin to imagine the amount of money that has been lost from Live Nation and other touring sectors like them. But the shit that's outlined in this memo, bro, the shit that is outlined in this memo, unacceptable, bro. So out the gate, very first line, artist guarantees, which if you don't know what an artist guarantee is, it's pretty much the bare minimum amount of money that you would get for doing the show if you negotiate that, right? So it says artist guarantees will be adjusted downward 20% from 2020 levels. And you may be thinking, Corey, what's wrong with that? We in hard times, man. Everybody got to make sacrifices so we can make this work. And you're right. We do need to be working together and making sacrifices so this can work. But once I get deeper into this, you will understand a little bit more why this is fucked up, right? So out the gate, artist guarantees, meaning the amount of money they're going to, uh, that they are willing to negotiate for guarantee money to each act is going to be down on average 20% from the 2020 levels. Out the gate, red flag, right? The next red flag is the payment term. Line three, artists will receive a deposit of 10% one month before the festival contingent on an executed agreement and fulfillment of marketing responsibilities. The balance minus standard deductions for taxes and production costs will be paid after the performance. Now, let me tell you why this is fucked up, right? Most of the time when you go to book an act, typically they ask for 30 to 50% of their overall like booking fee up front. And then you usually pay them the rest after the show or like once we usually pay them like once they walk off stage. Some you pay like right before they walk on stage if you trust them enough, but we usually like pay them once they're off, right? So out the gate, 
it's saying that artists will receive 10% of their deposit one month before the festival. So they don't even get the entire deposit. They get 10% one month before the show at the festival, but they are still required to fulfill a marketing agreement that is planned around the show. Now, I don't know how many of y'all have ever thrown shows or thrown the festival, but no one is marketing a festival a month out from the date, right? So out the gate, what that means is that these artists are essentially working for free on a promotional end, and then they get 10% of that money a month before, which really ain't shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you think about it, it's like, it's really not anything. 10% of your fee, bro. So if you're, if you're an artist, let's say like a the baby or something that's charging like 50k to a show that means they're gonna give you 5k just to lock you in that's not shit bro i would give the baby 5k to make sure he pops up and he gonna promote for me for free ski over this shit bro red flag number two right and i mean most of the time the marketing responsibility thing is like something you usually put into a contract you have to make sure these artists promote because they won't promote if you don't make them promote it's crazy but the payment thing out the gate just isn't something that I could see a lot of them agreeing to. I mean, a lot of them won't have a choice but to agree to it, but it's something that I could see that they would never agree to if they didn't have to agree to it, right? Another red flag, which may have already been here. I've never seen like a Live Nation contract before this, but they have a streaming requirement, right? So all artists will be required to allow their performance to be filmed by the festival for use in a live television broadcast, a live webcast, on-demand streaming, streaming, or satellite a live satellite radio broadcast so out the gate they're basically saying like yo we're gonna take this footage make our own content out of it and we can do with it whatever we want to do which like i said most of these big festivals tend to do stuff like this but like i said some of this stuff doesn't sound fucked up on its own but once you stack it all together it gets fucked up right so the next line merchandise right purchaser will retain 30 percent of artist merchandise sales and send 70 percent to the arts within two weeks following the festival so this is something that's new to me. I've never heard of this. I've never been in this situation. I didn't know Live Nation did this, but Live Nation is basically saying that we get 30% of your merch sales and we will pay you the rest two weeks after the festival. So once they've had two weeks to count the money up, make sure it's straight, it don't even touch the artist's hands, which is crazy to me. I never knew that. I never knew artists would like sign into this. You get paid your merch money two weeks after the festival, after giving them 30%, while also only being paid 10% of your fee before doing the show and doing all the work, well, while also doing the work, and your guarantee is already down 20% from last year. So you're already out the gate making less money, right? At fair accommodations, these expenses will be the responsibility of the artist. Now, yes, typically when you negotiate these deals with these artists, either you include their travel fee in the price, or, you know what I'm saying, you pay for it. That's how it usually is. So they're out the gate saying like, nah, bro, you gotta pay for yourself. This, these next couple lines is when it really starts to get violated, like really, 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 really violated, right? So they have a clause in here about insurance and it says the artist is required to maintain its own cancellation insurance as the promoter is not responsible for the artist fee in the event of a cancellation of the festival due to weather or a force majeure, right? So cancellation insurance is pretty much what it sounds like. It is like insurance that covers uh, the event or covers you in the case that an event has to be canceled for whatever reason. Force majeure, means that basically means like an act of God, like something that you or I can't control. So they're saying that the artist is responsible for anything that is out of both of their controls that allows the event to be canceled, right? Which makes the next line so much more fucked up, bro. So it says, if an artist cancels this performance in breach of the agreement, the artist will pay the promoter two times the artist fee. So if I have to cancel the show, and you were going to pay me $50,000 to come and do the show, out the gate, I have to pay you $100,000 for cancellation of the show. However, Live Nation made sure to cover their own ass by saying that if a show is canceled due to poor ticket sales, the artist will receive 25% of their guarantee. 25% of their guarantee if the show is canceled due to poor ticket sales, which isn't really the fault of the artist because Live Nation is the promoter. It is Live Nation's responsibility to make sure the asses are in the seat. That's the whole point of a promoter, right? Now, they also have their own force majeure contra uh, clause in here that says, if the artist's performance is canceled due to an event of force majeure, including a pandemic similar to COVID-19, the promoter will not pay the artist its fee. The artist is responsible for obtaining any cancellation insurance for his performance. Now you are understanding why this is fucked up, right? Because they're saying that, yo, you have to get your own insurance. We're not gonna we're not gonna cover something canceling the event. 
if you counsel for whatever reason, you owe us double the money. But if we have to counsel for some reason that's out of our control or we feel like it's out of our control, we ain't got to give you shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't have to give you shit. They follow into the next line by saying that if the promoter, either because of orders of the venue or any governmental entity, is not permitted to use the full capacity of the venue, then the promoter may terminate the agreement and the artist will refund any money previously paid. So the reason that that particular clause is like extra super duper fucked up is that because we like we haven't all the way opened up right like most states are in what like phase two like opening up like like coffee shops and shit most of these live shows i feel like are gonna get canceled over the next couple of months like all these places like live nation are trying to do shows they're being like really hopeful for the future and shit no bro they're gonna shut that shit down like i said no one's trying to get sneezed on by a 16 year old that might have crump bro like i ain't trying to deal with that but they're basically putting all of the risk, all of the damn near guarantee risk that comes with doing a show during the COVID-19 pandemic. And they're putting that off on the artist while basically taking none of the risk themselves. Because if you feel like you need to cancel the show, let's say your manager gets sick or your road agent, your road agent gets sick or something comes up to where you can't do it out the gate, you owe them double the money. Right. But if they feel like that you're not going to be able to sell tickets because of COVID, which a lot of these artists are not going to be able to do their usual capacities because people are not trying to go to large scale events right now. This is Live Nation pushing people to get back into shows, not the artists. Like all the artists that I've heard talking or spoke to, like they're hype, bro. They're learning about internet money and merch sales and Twitch and shit, but they're not trying to do shows and risk themselves uh, at harm and risk their fans at harm that's not the fans trying to do that that is live nation so live nation is basically like yo we want you to get your thousands of fans to come into this venue ignore all the social distancing laws put their own health and their lives at risk while also taking the full blunt of the responsibility if the show has to be canceled for some reason and that is fucked up, especially when you consider the fact that they're taking a percentage of their merch fees, only paying them 10% of their fee a month out, and and making them get their own insurance, bro. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that doesn't sound right to me. Now, the 10% thing a month before, I kind of understand, because that's them saying like, yo, we need to see if shit's going to get canceled before we do it. But once again, that's a risk that the promoter takes, bro. When you book a show, when you book an act, you are booking it knowing that, yo, fucking lightning could strike tomorrow, burn the whole building down, and I could I could be ass out. Which, luckily, you know what I'm saying, you're able to work out agreements with some artists that does make both of you kind of take the blunt force of what happened, right? Like, we've negotiated like certain refund policies if, if something isn't met. So, for example... We had one show one time we thought we were going to have to cancel because it was like, I think like a hurricane or something was coming through Atlanta. And we had to work out to where if the show gets canceled, we were still going to pay the act like 30 or 40% of that fee because, you know, like we couldn't control that. They couldn't control that. We understand they had certain like money that they put into getting here that we didn't want to fuck them over because it would ruin the relationship, right? So we're like, we get it. This isn't your fault. This isn't our fault. So we don't want to take the full blunt of the force and completely lose out on all the money, but we feel you too. You're doing the job. You plan for this money. So we're not going to leave you all the way ass out too, which I personally feel like is fair. Live Nation doesn't think that's fair. So I don't know, man. Like I said, I think that this is just opening the door for a lot of people to use COVID as a reason to just get over on artists. Like they're going to disguise it by the fact of like, oh, I'm just trying to protect myself. What if we have to cancel this show? What if something happens? It's like, you're not the only one taking that risk. This is my fans coming to the show. You're relying on me, my social media marketing to get these people out, which you're requiring me to do. After you take my merch sales and you won't even protect me or protect my pockets in the case that both of us get fucked over by the government shutting this down or the city shutting this down or another disease or a pandemic like COVID shutting this down. That's not fair, bro. You can't tell me that's fair. Like, no one can tell me it's fair. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm interested to know what y'all think, man. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you feel Live Nation? Do you feel like they're just protecting themselves and they have the right to do this? Or do you think they're fucked up and these bigger artists need to fight back in some way? Like I said, luckily, this isn't going to affect like 90% of artists because Live Nation is usually reserved for like artists who reach a certain tier. Or... A lot of like label artists. A lot of label artists about to be blown at this shit and get fucked over. But once again, curious to know what you think. Read the article in the description below below before you comment. But let me know what you think. Do you agree with Live Nation or do you agree with me? 
other than that, once again, come and follow me on Instagram at Cody the Savior. Link will be in the description below. If you feel like you learned anything today, please like and share this video. Hit those post notifications as well as I wouldn't want you guys to miss anything. Once again, my name is Corey, and I'll see y'all whenever next time I feel like dropping a video.